Sudrian Chronicles, Book 26, Tramway Engines, Story 3, Mavis, based upon Mavis by the Reverend Wilbert Audrey. Toby nestled cozily in far corner sheds. The warmth of his spoilers spread through him as he rarely blinked his eyes open. Morning, Percy. Thomas. He yawned. He opened his eyes fully to see that both tank engines had left. He brushed it off as he observed his surroundings. The sun rose to his right just above the tips of the townhouses. A nice crisp autumn wind bristled through the bushes and grass beside the shed. Thomas whistled as he left with the first train of the day. Wait, what? Toby stared on in horror as he watched Thomas leave with the first train. Thomas shouldn't be the first train. It's meant to be me. He stammered as he looked into the shed at the clock. 7.30 it read. Fuck. Toby! Elsie is right here! Corrected Henrietta from the carriage shed. Yeah. He cried, shooting forward and wobbling out of the shed. Wendell and Emma stumbled around his cab trying not to fall out. We're late. He whooshed, waking the entire coach shed. Daisy groaned as the other coaches murmured. Quiet down, Toby. Driver needs to concentrate on putting on my makeup. Late for what? Elsie yawned as they were pulled out of the shed. Toby trundled up the line as fast as he could, which wasn't that fast down the farm lane, and up to the quarry. What are ye? Asked Wendell, but was cut off by Toby as he ran through a crossing, over a bridge, and into the quarry. He quickly dropped off Henrietta and Elsie into a siding. He raced up to a line of trucks and was about to shunt them when they were pulled away from him. Hey, get back here. He yelled to the trucks who were giggling maniacally. No, we're going up her. They laughed. Her? Who's her? I'm her, announced a voice from behind the trucks. They were shunted into a siding as another engine revealed themselves. A stumpy little diesel. She had yellow hazard stripes that lined the front of her with dark navy blue side plates akin to his own. She was squeaky clean, fresh from the workshop with a septum and nostril piercing. Who are you? asked Toby accusingly. I'm Mavis. I'm the quarry's newest shunter. Mr. Curry said that you needed help and that he finally made enough money to buy an engine. So here I am. Ah, I don't need help. I run this quarry perfectly fine by myself. That's not what Mr. Curry told me. It sounded like you were struggling. I've run this quarry perfectly fine myself, spat Toby. This is my quarry, actually. You aren't owned by Mr. Curry. I am. Now you're trespassing. Ta-ta. Toby was aghast. Why, I never. I've run this quarry perfectly fine for the last ten years. What right do you have to come in here and steal my- Tobias! Cheered a voice. Mr. Curry had left his office, beaming over to the two engines. I've seen you, Matt Mavis. Oh, how wonderful. I have, sir, replied Toby cheerfully, hiding his repulsion. Marvelous. Now Mavis here isn't allowed to leave the quarry just yet. She still needs to learn how things work around here. Mavis rolled her eyes as Toby snickered. But by the looks of it, Mr. Curry went on, She's doing rather well. I understand, sir. Would you like me to help her? No, thank you, Tobias. She's a fast learner. Extremely adaptable. You won't have to worry about shunting here anymore. Ah, uh, <clears throat> I see, sir. Toby frowned. I'm glad you understand, Tobias. Anyways, I have some most important paperwork to sign. You two hop to it. And he hopped back to his office. Oh boy, I can't wait to shunt my quarry. Welp, time to teach you how to shunt. But Mr. Curry just told us that I'm the shunter. I understand, but you clearly have to learn a thing or two. I mean, look at this place. Now the trucks that go out of the quarry go next to the mine shaft. The empty trucks go next to the The empty trucks go next to the hoppers. Ew, and over Oh, and overflow trucks go to the Why would the four trucks go by the side of the mine? They should be near the entrance so that it will be faster for you to grab. Well, that's just not how I've done it. And Toby popped over to the line of trucks at the entrance, coupling up to a line, and began to shunt them over to the shafts. Well, I don't give give up. Um, 
give a fudge about how you do it. This is my quarry. And Mavis ran up to Toby and stood it in the way. I've worked this quarry for the last decade. This is how I've always done it, and that's how I'd prefer it to stay, chuckled Toby. But Mavis refused. The tram engine rang its bell like a seagull's laughter. Ring, ding, 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 ding. It chirped with a long line of trucks sitting in front of it. The quarry's newest diesel, the scavenger, fouled the points of where the tram tried to go, its engine revving loudly. Workmen and miners held their ears from the commotion. Some of the older men started to urge on the clanking steam engine. The younger men dropped their tools and cheered on the oil-guzzling diesel. Mr. Gerald Curry ran out of his office. Shut her down, he yelled to the diesel's crew. We can't, gasped the driver as fumes drew from its grills. Vroom, vroom, vroom growled the diesel. Ring, ding, 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 tethered the tram. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Ring, ding, 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 ding. Diesel tried her best to argue, but it was no use. The tram engine didn't care. She just sizzled warmly, waiting for the diesel to move. Screw you, shouted Mavis. Now that's not very kind. I'm not kind, you're shunting my quarry. Now, you must listen to your elders. I'm trying to show you how this quarry operates. You're not even meant to be walking here. You're just some random old guy. You're retired. Retired? Laughed Toby. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I I'm not retired. I, I, I couldn't be retired. I... I I could never, no, 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 no. Someone's in denial. Toby seethed. You got a lot of opinions, don't you, Mavis? Yes, I do, and I quite like them, too. Well, you can jolly well keep them to yourself. We ain't changing how we do things just because you showed up. Now, where are my trucks? You're shunting them right now. They were by the entrance, so you wouldn't need to come into the quarry. That's why you had left them there. That's not a bad... I mean, <clears throat> I'll let you get away with it this time since it's your first day. But I better not catch you doing it again. Understand? Whatever. Mavis, do you understand? Sure thing, Grandpa. Toby to you, Missy. Can you please leave? You're blocking my way from shunting. Also, you're, like, really late. Oh, fudge, you're right! He made way for Elsie and Henrietta and swiftly departed. I'm going to ignore everything he just said. Toby was grumbling all the way down to Farquhar to such a point that his crew couldn't tell who was the truck and who was the engine. They swept in and out of the farm lane and crawled along the tram road before arriving at Farquhar. Hello, Toby! Chirped Percy as Toby sidled into the transfer sidings. Percy's chipper demeanor quickly dropped as Toby clanked in. Are you alright? It's that new diesel. Who? Mavis, the new Chandra at the quarry. She swings about like she knows everything. She's ruining the quarry. New Shunta? So that's who came through. Oh, that's great. You've met her? Yeah, she stopped by this morning on her way up and said hello. That's what happens when you don't wake up on time. Says the engine who doesn't sleep and is off playing ghost. Daisy purred loftily from inside her shed as she was coolly drawn out. She shivered. It's getting colder by the day. The point is, interjected Toby, that she's nothing but treble. I can feel it in my frames. I don't want either of you talking to her. Sure thing, Toby, sighed Percy, backing onto some stone trucks. Seasons change, but Toby's attitude didn't. Neither did Mavis's. She would force Toby out of the quarry as soon as he tried any of his funny business, as she put it. Toby would always have to come in, nonetheless, as the trucks were always somewhere new each day. Toby had found Mavis several times sidling out of the quarry and down to Farquhar. She had good conversation with the others, and much to Toby's disbelief, she had made good friends of them as well, especially with Thomas. One evening, Toby drew through the farm lane. He was hot and bothered as he drew his trucks and coaches through it. He had stopped at one side as Emma ran through, turning a stop sign at the other end where cars and tractors raced about. 
The car stopped as Emma came back. Toby drew forward and went through the lane, which dipped. You think they clean this place more often from the animals and checklists? Complained Wendell. It's nothing really, just a bit of dirt, sighed Toby as he struggled. The weather was wet and dark clouds hung over. This will make the stone trucks harder though, he murmured as he made his way to the other side. Emma jumped down from the cab once again as Toby sat at the other side of the crossing. She turned the stop sign, letting traffic through once again. As Toby began to trundle away, a tractor and cart tipped into the lane, its load bouncing precariously. Hay that sat on top glided off as it lay on the tracks. Toby sighed as he continued. He soon arrived at Farquhar and sat at the transfer sidings. Toby's an old fuss pot, came the distant voice of Daisy from inside the shed. Toby rolled his eyes as he listened. Steam engines have the uses, but they don't understand. Toby shot forward away from the trucks as he realized who she was talking to. He rounded around the carriage shed as he was met by Mavis and Daisy idling in the shed. Daisy's second man sat on Mavis's running board, painting her face with large eye lines. You look fat. What are you doing here? Confronted Toby. You're not meant to be out of the quarry. Yeah, well, scoffed Mavis. Daisy is letting me try on her makeup. But you're meant to be in the quarry. You're not ready to be making your way down the line. Your crew doesn't know how the lane works. Tell me you didn't just jaywalk. N no, I, I just waited for the traffic to be gone. That's jaywalking. I'm a train. I can't walk. You're meant to wait on one side as your crew switches the sign to stop traffic. Then you go through. Now go back to the quarry. You're not my dad. I'm better off him. Ugh, I hate you. You need to stop moving my trucks as well, added Toby. I can't keep playing hunt the trucks. Well then, it get better. I don't need your help anyways. How about you take them yourself? Fine, I will! With that, she snubbed away out of the shed and fussed back up the tram road. Be careful with the lane, called Toby. It gets slippery, and it's going to snow tomorrow. You're such a brilliant father figure, scoffed Daisy sarcastically. What? I'm just trying to teach her how things work here. And what if she likes her way more? It's not harming you, is it? Uh, suppose not. There's an expression people use. Walk a mile on another woman's shoes. Maybe you should try and look at things from her view. Run a mile in her flanges to say, hmm? Huh. When did you become so smart, Daisy? Oh, I've always been... What are you saying? Oh, um, nothing. It just, I just haven't seen you care for someone this much. And Mavis of all engines. Oh, she's a sweetheart. You just have to get to know her, dear. She brought down some trucks you left by accident. Not my fault. She moves the truck so much, you. I'm not finished, Toby. All right. She wanted to make sure that you weren't overloading on your next trip. Likely story. Toby, I will not think twice about having my fitter cut you up into wood and having Thomas and Percy burn you every morning if you don't stop interrupting me. Okay, okay. She saw my fitter removing my makeup and asked what it was. So of course I had to invite her into the shed so I could teach her everything a model like me knows. The poor thing didn't even know what lipstick was. Oh my god, Rude. I know. Well, now the problem is fixed. Now, all we need to focus on is our daddy issues. Toby sighed and went mournfully to sleep. The next morning, Mavis awoke to a chilly air rustling between her vents as a radiator roared to life. She opened a lofty eye to find the quarry smothered in a blanket of white. What on earth? It's your first snow, Mavis, so oh, it's wonderful! Beamed Mr. Curry as he strolled towards the shed. A winter wonderland, you could say. He slipped on some ice and waved his arms frantically, trying to uphold his balance. After a very awkward and long time, he fell onto his bum, smashing the ice. Are you alright, Mr. Curry? I'm fine, Mavis. Just a little bit out of practice is all. Out of practice? Yes, I'm Farquhar's best ice skater. 
No one dared to tell him it was only because he was the town's biggest employer. Mavis hesitantly made it through the yard, shoveling the snow off the rails of her cow catcher. She enjoyed the soft stuff. She had heard from Thomas that it was a nuisance and could cause any engine a problem. I don't know what Thomas was talking about. It's fun. She giggled as she made it to the line of freshly loaded trucks. These are the last ones for the winter before you have no more work for a while, told her driver, Elijah Harlow, as she shunted them in order. Last ones? Yes, we can't work in the winter of the snow. It causes problems. Well, we better make the last lot worth it. And she buffed into her line. The trucks groaned. What do you mean? Asked the driver. Oh, well, when we take the... We? We're not taking the first train down, are we? Toby said I could last night. Is Mr. Curry aware of this? Pfft, of course. He, he's fine with it. Besides, I don't need help from that fuss pop, Toby. Mavis was quickly making her way down from the quarry. The trucks were between each other. They didn't like how she had bumped and biffed them back in the quarry. Let's pay her out! Let's push her down the hill! They snickered. However, Mavis knew all about Percy's predicament and made sure to be careful with them. She gracefully brought them down and soon she reached the lane. Almost there. I'll get to see the rest of the branch. Just to pass the lane now. She stopped on the other side. Now, how does this do dad work again? She crept forward and down into the dip. The dip existed long ago from gravity trains. It slowed the trains down before they reached Farquhar, and a horse would then take them down the line. When the first engines arrived, the dip was used instead to slow down runaway trains. She reached the middle, watching the cars and other automobiles dash over the crossing. Mavis crawled up to the other side, then paused, waiting for the cars to stop. But the stone walls blocked the cars' view of her, and they never knew she was there. Mavis waited, and waited, and waited, but no one stopped for her. Elijah pointed out a stop sign that sat on the other end of the crossing. We must have to turn that to stop traffic. Go on, Owen. Owen, Mavis' second man, jumped from the cab and precariously scrambled across the traffic. Soon enough, he flipped the sign and traffic had stopped. He scrambled across the way and made his way into the cab. With a roar from her engine, Mavis crawled onto the crossing. One in the headlamp for that fuss pot, Toby. She looked forward to having a giggle about Oof Daisy, but she never got that giggle as the heavy stone trucks slipped up the other side of the dip. They held her back and refused to move. Pull, pull, you won't move, pull, pull, you won't move, sang the trucks. She growled furiously as she roared her engine loudly, trying to pull the train over the crossing. But nothing worked. Fudge! Hiccup Mavis as she tried to reverse out. Soon, Elijah, Owen, and the guard were lifting her skirt and laying down sand under her wheels. Traffic warred and honked. Cars tried to leave and find another way around it, but it only kept building up. Up! Roared Mavis as she spun her wheels furiously. But no matter what, she couldn't move. Lovely day for it, isn't it? Grinned Terrence. Tell me, we have to leave, pleaded Wendell, trying to start his engine. Mavis is taking the first train. I've got plenty of time till my next, snored Toby. You actually let her? Of course. She has to learn how to pull them eventually. The furious horn of Mavis bellowed through the town. Toby, what did you do? Nothing. I'm letting her learn. Toby, you know that she isn't allowed down here. If the fat can chill her, he won't find out. I haven't told him the other time she came here, did I? Mmm, fine. But if anything happens... Toby! Toby! Shrieked the station master, running up to the sheds. M Mavis is stuck at the... at the lane! He gasped wearily. Toby! I warned her it was slippery. And whose fault is that that she's there in the first place? But she called me an old fusspot. Splutter, Toby. What made her come play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin? Listen, Toby, she's young yet. She may not want to eat hip, but you know she does need it. Toby sighed. This really is my fault, isn't it? Uh-huh, groaned Wendell, massaging his forehead. Let's get going, then. Wait, really? I'm tram enough to know when I gotta fix my problems. Hissing and clanking, Toby made his way out of the yard and onto the road. Get your train out of the damn road and shove it up your- Sammy, that's no way to talk, interjected Terrence. I don't care, that engine is in our fucking way. 
A bell cut through the air as Toby approached Mavis, still stuck on the crossing. She was fuming as people in cars complained. Having trouble, Mavis? Well, <laughs> I am surprised. I don't need your help. She growled, trying to pull the train up again. Instead, her engine started to smoke, and Elijah had to shut her down. Toby chuckled as he backed down onto Mavis. With much puffing and wheel slip, Toby pushed Mavis and the trucks back into the dip and onto the other side. Mavis hardly helped at all. The hard work made Toby's fire burn fiercely. Emma took hot cinders from Toby's firebox and walked up and down the lane, spreading it. She flipped the stop sign so that traffic could resume. Once she was done, she flipped the sign once more and walked back to Toby. Triumphantly, Toby pulled Mavis and the trucks into the dip. When he crawled up the other side, he let the trucks push him. He eased up through the crossing and back into the yards. Are you alright? He asked when he left the trucks on the sidings. Mavis said nothing as she purred quietly, acting like he wasn't there. Look, I'm sorry. I tried to warn you. And there you go again! Huh? Just when you could actually try to help me, you always blame whatever happened on me. It was you who told me I could bring down the train. It's you who's going to get me stuck in the quarry forever now. I'll never be able to leave, and it's all your fault. And she fumed out of the yard, running back to the quarry, mascara dripping down her face.